For the 1967 TT, the Diamond Jubilee, a three-class production race was added to the race program. The FAM flag was ridden in and a lineup of riders from all countries paraded before the grandstand prior to the production race. Motorcycle clubs were invited to parade along Douglas Prom. This is the contingent from my club, the Saltbox MCC from Biggin Hill. Mike Halewood and Ralph Bryans, together with the legendary Honda mechanic Ike San, discussed practice issues under the gaze of many fans. Mike was always ready to sign autographs, even when booted and suited and ready for practice. The production races had a Limon start. This is the 750 class. Griff Jenkins is number three, with prod racing regulars Peter Butler 17 and Ray Knight 19 already away. Number 10 is Steve Spencer with Dutchman Jan Stribis number 15. Ray Knight led into quarter bridge but John Hartle was already on his shoulder and pulled away for a comfortable win on his flux to Bonneville from Paul Smart on the Dunstall Dominator and Tony Smith on his BSA Spitfire. Bob Heath, later known as a classic Manx ace, rode this Spitfire in his TT debut. John Hartle and his sponsor, Jeff Duke, in the winner's enclosure. Later he receives his winner's trophy with the ACU secretary, Mary Driver, in attendance. Neil Kelly waits to start the production 500cc race. Despite a typical velo poor start, he came through the field to win. Both he and Keith Heckles were used in the works squish head engines. The exhaust note would seem to indicate that their silencers were fitted with a mega inside the fishtail. <laughs> Dave Nixon brought the Boyer of Bromley Tiger 100 into third place. Sidecar specialist Norman Hanks finished fifth on his A50 in his only solo TT. Percy Tate was the race favourite on his triumph, but he crashed out at Appledean on the first lap. Tony Dunnell was seventh on his CB77 but he was a front-runner in this class two years later on the Kawasaki. Local hero Neil Kelly with his entrant Reg Orpin of L. Stevens of Shepherd's Bush. He receives his winner's trophy from the Mayor of Douglas, James Collister. Neil was only the second Manx TT winner after Tom Sheard, who won the 1923 Senior TT on a Douglas. The 250 production class head down Bray Hill, led by Ken Finney. Fourth in the picture is Chris Vincent, who fell at Quarterbridge just half a mile further on. He remounted to finish eighth on his battle scarred and screenless Suzuki. The Bultarco Matralas of Bill Smith and Tommy Robb finished first and second. 
they were fitted with expansion boxes allowed in Spain. Not exactly production, but good noises though. Batley's Peter Paget rode this YDS Yamaha to 13th place, while Frank Whiteray finished 4th on his Crooks Suzuki. Dave Simmons on the twin cylinder Kawasaki Samurai. He finished in 7th place. The winners of the three production classes wait to be garlanded. Left to right, Neil Kelly, John Hartle and Bill Smith. Bill Beavers was one of the travelling marshals for 1967. Bill started his island racing career in the 1934 Senior Manx. During World War II he was a Don R. Bill rode solo and sidecar at every TT meeting from 1954 to 1960. Siegfried Shoutsu took the first of his nine TT victories in 67, ahead of German compatriot Klaus Enders. Pip Harris took third place. Mac Hobson and Jeff Atkinson on the Cowie BSA. According to some, it was an evil handling beast, but Mac made it work. Eric Parkinson's crescent powered outfit arrived on the island in kit form. He spent many hours building it and getting the three cylinder two stroke to run properly. They say bad practice, good race. This proved the point as Eric and passenger Roy Philpot finished 11th, first two stroke home. Rudy Kurth was not so lucky with his similar powered cat. With passenger Jean-Claude Goudet, he failed to finish the first lap. Con contrast that with Peter Gerrish's sit-up-and-reg Vincent outfit. Peter had entered a DMW outfit, but this failed to appear. The distressed look on Horst Schneider's face may be due to the fact that he fell out of the chair at Governor's Bridge on the last lap. He remounted to take the win with Sideways Sid. Between race days, what better than a run on the steam train? I do like the look of Mike Harewood Stokers as he heads aboard Maitland, built in 1905, two years before the TT started. The 12th Annual Vintage Club Rally included a lap of the original St John's course. Riders are starting from Timber Hill, where the first TT started in 1907. Mike Harewood took his first victory of the week in the lightweight class, ahead of Yamaha's Phil Reed with Honda teammate Ralph Bryan third. Bill Ivey was in contention, but the Yamaha failed to finish. John Kidson rode this venerable guzzy to a 20th place finish. But Peter Inchley, who finished third the previous year, was out of luck with the star-maker powered AJS.
the first to congratulate Mike in the winner's enclosure was pre-war TT star Stanley Woods. Mike had just equaled Stanley's haul of 10 TT wins. More was to follow. Suzuki and Yamaha slugged it out in the ultra lightweight TT. Phil Reed won on the Yamaha and Stuart Graham was second on the Suzuki, 14 years after his father had won the same race. Akiyazu Motohashi finished third on his TT debut. Bill Ivey was again out of luck in this race but he was destined to win the 1967 Ultra Lightweight World Championship. Kel Carruthers on a sweet sounding Honda finished fifth. The Bantam boys were still out there flying the British flag. Bob Newby at signpost corner. Little Gary Dickinson was the only rider having to carry a lead ballast. He and his Honda were under the minimum race weight. Chris Conn waits to start the Junior TT with John Cooper number 5 behind. But there was no catching Mike Halewood in his Honda 6. Giacomo Agostini gave chase but still ended up over three minutes behind. Derek Woodman gave the East German MZ a third place. Fred Stevens pulled in and retired at Parliament Square on his Hannah Payton. Chris Conn, seen here at Signpost, was first Brit bike home taking 5th place. Amongst the exotic machinery, Ray Knight was riding Hughes Motorcycles 3TA Base Triumph to a bronze replica finish. The flag has fallen and the 6750cc TT is underway. Number 29 is Malcolm Worsley, item. 17 is Harold Cosgrove, item. And 12 is Pat Walsh, held and hawk. The winner was Stuart Graham, followed by Hans George Anschait, both on the Suzuki Twins. Tommy Robb finished third but he was riding the production single cylinder machine. Barry Smith rode the derby for the first time. His persistence with the Spanish stroker would reap a benefit a year later after the Japanese withdrew from 50cc racing. No items finished. Canadian Harold Cosgrove got two laps out of his The scoreboard sign writers didn't have time to finish before they started working on the senior. Look at the speed difference between Anshate number one and Tommy Rob number five. Regarded by many as the pinnacle of two stroke development, the 1967 Suzuki RK67 50cc water cooled twin revved to 17,000 RPM and was capable of 170 kph. This 14 speed miracle took Hans George Enschet to the world title.
It has been called one of the classic TT races. Would Ago on the nimble MV3 beat Mike Harewood on the brute of a Honda 4? The build up to the senior TT. Number 6 is Malcolm Stanton and 7 is Swiss Gola Mazowski. Mike pushes the big Honda off. Ago would leave the line 30 seconds later. It was nip and tuck all the way, swapping the lead many times each lap. The battle royal came to an end when Ago's chain snapped, leaving Windy Corner. After a cup of tea, he freewheeled back to the pits. There were two MVs in the senior. One was Ago, the other one was ridden by Hugh Evans. It was a 175 MV frame with a BSA A50 engine shoehorned in it. The petrol tank is functional, not elegant. Renzo Pasolini's Benelli sounded ace. It failed to finish the race. Melvin Rice took over the slate of Vincent after Ray McKay crocked himself in practice. He got it to the finish. Fred Stevens' Hannah Payton took him to fifth place. The machine forms the basis of the 500 that has taken the classic scene by storm. Peter Williams on Bray Hill. He would never have dreamed he would be a runner up on his match list. Peter's father, Jack Williams, was, for many years, development engineer for the 7R and G50 machines. Third place went to Steve Spencer, another TG debutante, but with a proven track record from the Manx. Peter Williams is congratulated by Mike at the finish. Stan Harewood stands between them. Albert Maul receives his bronze replica, which marked his retirement from island racing. Albert started in the Senior Manx in 1936. After finishing racing, he was enrolled as a travelling marshal for many years. Many a newcomer has learnt a lot from tagging onto Albert on travelling marshal duty. I can confidently predict that Albert never had as much horsepower in his racing career than he had with the 1978 Honda CBX. Lifelong Honda fan John Dalton painted this pic of Mike on the Honda 6. He is shown here with Hiratoshi Honda son of Surishiro. There can be only one way to finish this 67 review, as we've started, with Mike the Bike and the Honda 6. Thanks for watching.